We're just playing fish number three of the day. Um, come quite quick really, we've been fishing probably 20 minutes. Um, we're at Decoy Lakes today and once I've got this fish in we're just going to run through a few tips that hopefully this time of year and throughout the winter will help you catch a few more fish. Fish are still fighting like it's summer. As you can see, <laughs> giving me a bit of the run around. I think this could be another barb all the way it's fighting. Yeah, it is. Another lovely little barbel. Don't know when they're beaten. But that one is now. There we go, popping back and we'll run through some tips. Something I like to do at this time of year, um, I mean it's very cold today but sort of throughout the winter, is I like to start off without feeding anything. Um, I like to have a chuck round with a bomb, just a simple 20 gram inline lead. Um, here I've got a 6 mil red pellet on. I just like to have a cast around the swim, various places, and obviously this time of year the fish shoal up tight. If you can locate a shoal, you can actually catch a lot of fish without feeding anything. The danger of feeding any amount of bait at this time of year is that they can actually back off it. Um, so feeding is actually detrimental to, to catching fish. So I like to have a chuck around with a bomb, be it to an island or open water. You can look for line bites. Um, obviously if you're chucking to an island, getting lots of liners, you can drop short. And it's actually surprising how many fish you can catch without feeding. Um, look for signs of fish, fish bubbles, fish topping. Um, any little sign you can have, any feature, bushes or reeds or anything, have a chuck around them and you can actually catch a lot of fish without feeding. Um, some days when you're getting liners you can actually follow the shoal of fish around your peg and just chase them around your peg all day. Um, I like to use a smaller bomb as I can, um, just so as not to spook them. Um, again, if some days when you can really, really see where the shoal of fish is, if you can pick the fish off around the edge of the shoal rather than chucking a bomb straight into them, you'll catch for longer and, and obviously you can then move around your peg. Um, I like to do it, the advantage obviously on the bomb is you can read line bites and you can tell difference sometimes between little plucks, which means there's probably fish sort of nearer to you up in the water, big long slow pull rounds, there's probably fish nearer your bomb, pulling your bomb along. So surprising actually just you can read what's happening in your peg by fishing a bomb. Um, baits we'll go through in a bit more detail. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's surprising. Fish will, if they're not hungry this time of year, they will actually back away from feed, but just a single hook bait they will pick up. Obviously the other thing this time of year, it's very cold, it's freezing today, chucking a bomb around, leaves your hands free, you can have a nice cup of coffee, and keep yourself warm. Um, and just concentrate on that tip and just read what's happening. Tackle wise, run you through it. I've got a 20 gram inline bomb. I've got around 10 inches of 018 power micron to a 16 MXC3. We've got a 10 foot Horizon Pro feeder rod, nice short rod paired with a 4000 reel. And what's quite important on there, I've got an ounce tip. Two reasons for that. It will pick up any little movement indication liners to help you read what's happening. And also big liners, it's very forgiving. So the last thing you want is your bomb to move, basically. It can pick up leaves, debris, anything on the bottom with a nice light tip. That will take, that will absorb a lot of the movement of the liners. So that's moving rather than your bombs moving. So that's, that's quite important. Just a quick chat about baits now. Um, 
it's important to fish something you're confident in because you might be leaving it out there a long time. Um, there's no right or wrong really. One of my favourites is bread, um, two or three eight mil discs, um, hair rigged, brilliant bait. Um, here at Decoy bread's not actually allowed, um, but there are plenty of other alternatives. A nice visible white pop-up boilie is a brilliant bait, catches a lot of fish. Um, the beauty of these is a tub will last you forever basically, catch several fish on the same bait, so that's a great bait. Then you've got your band and wafter type hook baits, pink's a particular favourite of mine at the moment, I'm not sure why but it catches a lot of fish. Um, maggots, brilliant bait, catch loads of fish on maggots, anything will eat them. Other options, your pellets, um, red pellets are a particular favourite of mine at the moment, got a lot of confidence in those. Or just a standard 8 mil Screttons type pellet, um, prefer the Screttons because they're a lighter colour, I think they're more visible. Um, Corn's another brilliant bait. It's just a case of trying what you're confident with, what you're happy with, and finding out what's best on the day. Let's have a talk now about baits uh, for pole fishing this time of year. I like to keep things dead, dead simple. Basically maggots wouldn't go anywhere without them this time of year. And then we've got micros and nice four mil expanders. Um, it really is that simple. Occasionally if bream and skimmers are coming into it, I would add a bit of a nice dark ground bait, very fine, so not much feed. Um, a lot of people don't know when to fish maggots and when to fish pellets. Um, the way I like to do it is if I can get away with fishing maggot, I'd much prefer it. You don't have to worry about overfeeding the fish. You can feed quite aggressively, roach, perch, other fish or mop anything up. Um, it's not a filling bait, so again, you can, you can get away with mistakes with maggots. Whereas with pellets, you have to be very, very careful how much you feed. It's very easy to overfeed the fish um, and it's just that little little bit more tricky than maggots. So I'd always start on maggot. If I'm getting silverfish and roach, perch and they're becoming an issue, then I'll change to pellet. Um, I'm quite happy to start on maggot and then change to pellet. As soon as I've fed pellets, I then think that's the way you've got to go. I don't like then changing back to maggot. Um, feed wise with pellets, Little and often this time of year really is the way to go. I like to feed the minimum amount of bait I can to catch fish just so we're not overfeeding them and spoiling swims. If you are fishing pellets and you're catching and then you stop, don't be frightened just to put your plummet on, plumb up maybe even only a metre away from where you were previously catching and start again. Pellets an instant bait really, you don't need to build a swim up, build a swim up, just if you're catching on it, then you stop catching, just simply move and start again. Um, conversely with maggots, maggots are a bait where you can build your swim up. You can be a bit more aggressive with them rather than, like I've just said, with pellet moving a swim with maggot. I'll just keep it going and prime it. Um, even if you have to come off it, if you stop catching, just keep that bait going in and hopefully the fish will come back. Um, the other option, of course, is especially on a peg like today where we've got a lot of space, you can have a maggot and a pellet line. Um, even if you plumb up two swims at the same depth, so you can literally just drop on one and then on the other. Um, you might find that one is particularly better than the other, say maggots better, start two maggot lines. So giving yourself the option on the day you could see what's best. Something to consider this time of year, obviously the water's cold and clear and the fish aren't ravenous like they are in the, in the summer. Um, so they're quite spooky and really you need to be as stealthy as you can on the bank. I like to just gently close my car door. I like to arrive at the peg, not park directly behind the peg, keep away a bit if I can. Get all your kit out in one go. Don't keep coming back, opening, shutting doors, slamming your boot, sliding your van door or whatever. Just try and get everything out in one go. Get to your peg as quietly as you can. Get your box down as quietly as you can. And I like to, anything I have to do standing up, as in pole rollers, getting rods out, 
do that early as soon as you get to your peg and then try and get on your box as quick as you can and just stay there until the start of the match or your pleasure session. Um, don't keep getting up and down, just keep everything as quiet and low as you can. Um, umbrellas, I have a rule, I either have my umbrella up all match, get it up early and keep it up till the end of the match, or I'll get wet. Um, more than one occasion I've been catching fish during a match, started raining, put my umbrella up and then stopped catching this. You moan if someone comes and stands behind you, an umbrella's cast in a far bigger shadow than that on the water. So just have a think about when you get to your peg, don't throw your keep nets in, just gently place them down the edge and basically just be as stealthy as you can. A method I love fishing in the winter is waggler and maggot. Um, obviously conditions have to be right if it's too windy and there's too much skim and tow, it isn't right. But if the wind allows, it's a method that I think gets you more bites than anything else in the winter. Not waving long poles about, um, casting a shadow over clear water, the fish definitely back off that in the winter. We're not talking about summertime wagglers, big pellet wagglers, it's a more refined approach with a nice fine insert waggler. Today I'm using a loaded waggler, it doesn't have to be loaded, um, just a waggler of your choice. Um, got the 12 foot Horizon X Pro today, four pound reel line, 014 hook length, four gram insert waggler. Um, it's about five foot deep where we're fishing today, so going down the line I've just got three evenly spread number nine shot to an 014 hook length and double maggot on an MXC1 size 16. Um, the wind isn't too bad today, I'm just about getting away with it. Um, the feed is spreading out a bit because it is quite breezy, but don't be worried about that on the waggler. You're creating a bigger feed area than you would be potting in on the pole. Um, but it doesn't seem to matter, to be honest, on the waggler. You definitely do get bites on this when you wouldn't get bites on anything else, so give it a go.